Welcome back, I got some water and I'm ready to work on this some more. So since the last time I started recording, I made a battery sprite because I plan on making the ships being able to drop health because it is a pretty hard game. And I tweaked a couple of things like the spawn rate and some of the ship's spawn speed. So at the moment we have the moving background, the ship moves, stuff comes down and fires at you and you can dodge the bullets and try and like sweep by and, and attack. It's a very hard game though. So what we need now are particle effects. Like explosions for when stuff dies. So we're going to go to create and we're going to go to particle system. And we're going to change its rotation to zero. Then we get a spread. Change the shape from cone to circle. And we can make that circle come from like a singularity. And now we're going to make the emission be a zero rate, but we're going to add a burst. So at the very beginning, we're just going to get one burst, so we get that like explosion look. We're going to go to our um, renderer. Here it is. We're going to change default particle to the sprite default. We also want to lower this the um, start size, make it like point one maybe. There we go. And we want their speed to be random. There is a way to do this, I'm pretty sure. But I don't know. See, we could make this shape be sphere, and this would be the result. I kind of like that better, actually. I might just do that. That's pretty nice. We get this explosion now. I want to add more to the burst though, make it maybe 60. Comes out super fast and then seems to slow down as it disperses. We can make um make the color be like an orange explosion color maybe. Pretty good. And now shape over lifetime or size over lifetime. We'll make that curve go down a bit. So it just decreases its size over life. Call it explosion. And I thought there was an option to delete itself once it stops working, but I'm not really sure. We might just make a timer on it to delete itself. But that's our explosion, and it looks pretty cool, so we're going to roll with that. This is actually really easy to implement. We just have to go to our enemy script. Um, and after this, put explosion. And now when we die, under our die function, we just need to instantiate explosion at the transform dot position and the equator neon identity. And we're done. That's our explosion. So now we can just choose our ship. I mean our shoot enemy, our tank enemy, and our fast enemy. And we can just drop an explosion onto their explosion component. Now when we play the game, if we successfully kill something, let's try and kill one of these, we will get that satisfying explosion that we all longed for. There we go. That would, feels good to blow some stuff up. <laughs> For some reason, ships are just dying, though. <laughs> We're just getting explosions. Oh, that's right. We have um, the explosions set to loop. So we actually have to turn that off, or we're going to keep exploding over and over again. So there we go. Just loops. Um, now we have cool explosions, and that was extremely easy to do. We can even give our bullets a particle effect if we want like a little trail coming out of them when they shoot. There's so much you could do with particle effects, but for the video's sake, we just, we're just going to have explosions. And we need these things to destroy themselves over a certain amount of time. We're going to make a new script called destroy self. There we go. Open that up. And then really simply in our start, we're going to have two little things. A public float time. And we could stick this component to anything. And 
destroy game object in that time. That's the whole script. It's actually kind of a waste of a script, but it works great. So we just have to have this, and we'll say in eight seconds, maybe it just destroyed itself. Now when we have an explosion, it will properly dispose of itself when it's done exploding. So we have our explosion, stuff blows up, satisfying particle effects everywhere. Those dots kind of look like um, bullets because they're really bright. I might make them faded a bit, honestly. It's been bothering me, so. Um, change its color to be like a creamy white. Change this one's color to be an even creamier gray. Looks a bit darker as if it's farther away. There we go, they, they take up, well, take up less space, but they look like they're smaller and they look like they're less distracting. So now we can blow up some spaceships. Feels a lot more like a good game now, just because of those particle effects. Looks are really everything. <laughs> so now we need to make a canvas. We'll put in the batteries maybe at the last video, because I want to do the canvas now, but if we have time, we'll throw in the battery. So create a UI, make it into a canvas. And we're going to do very similar if you've watched the platforming video to the whole score idea. Um, so we need to create UI text. I actually downloaded a text this time that I'll be using. We're going to call this score in all caps. And we're going to make it a nice bright white color. We also need to set our canvas, which is very important to scale with screen size 1920 by 1080. Otherwise, um, it just will not look right. Now we can readjust our score. Once again, make our text size very large. That big, let's say. There we go. And I'm going to change the font to my Arcade Classic font I downloaded. Which looks awesome. We go to our game. We have that big score in the top right corner. Which looks pretty good, in my opinion. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. For the sake of it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Might even change the pixels per unit to be like 200. Just to make it look more sharp. Cool. I'll just leave it at 100. Don't want to screw with anything that doesn't need to be messed with. And we'll lower that. And this will actually be the displayed score, so like, their score is like, extremely high. That's what goes over in this here. So we'll make this be able to extend the entire screen. And we can make a super complex scoring system. We can make a simple one, however you want to do it. That's just what our score is going to look like as we collect score. For now, I'll just put a zero, three zeros there, just for the heck of it. And we're going to need to create a new script called um, player press text, which is a probably the same thing I named it for the platformer. So we're going to use the same idea. Once again, in a good game, I would probably serialize my data using a class. But because it's a simple game, we're just going to use player prefs, which are simple to use and easy to implement. So, If you're looking for something more advanced, check out the advanced tutorials. But I don't think I made any of those. And I don't think... Um, I don't know if I'm going to have them up by the time you're watching this, so let's just do this for now. So you need your player pref name, so public string um, name, and now you just need an update here, which will be um, using Unity Engine dot UI. In our update, we're going to say um, Unity. Uh, Get component text dot text equals and now we'll make it be um player press dot get in we'll call it score plus an empty string just to cast it to a string and the end result we will have the number zero just displaying there until we get score. So now we need to make our spaceships worth score. So we're gonna go up to our public Loads and stuff. We're going to make a public and it's called score. And if I wanted to make this more efficient, which I kind of do, I just put a comma there. I could even fit all those onto the same comma line. 
Um, but uh, whatever, doesn't matter. Public and score. This can be how much they're worth. And on our death, we're gonna take our player prefs dot um, set int score to player prefs dot get int score plus score, which just adds score onto our score. <laughs> That's what that does. And now we'll display it. So whatever our score is, it will add on. Let's make the spaceships worth different amounts. So I'll make our fast enemies, which are the easiest to kill, worth only um, 100 points. And we'll make our shooter enemies, which are a little bit harder to kill, worth like 150. I'll make the tank enemies worth like 250, because these things are hard to kill. They're slow, and they shoot fast, and they're annoying. So there we go. We can rack up the score now. <laughs> Starting to really look like a game. Maybe we just need some lives now. Which you could put under our score to the left of it, wherever we want. Um, lives will display. We might even make lives into a player pref, just so we can see it nice and easy. But you're on your way now. You can make a shooter for what it is as it is now. But once again, I want to work on some stuff. Make um make it so you can see when the damage the player actually takes damage. Because for now, it doesn't really look like he's taking damage. I'm thinking of making it. So um, let me zoom in on my ship here. Also, we want to make our canvas be prefab in case something happens. We don't want to lose it. Let's zoom zoom in on our ship here. I want to make it so when he takes damage, that happens. Like he just kind of flashes red, which is easy to do. So we'll do that. In this tutorial. So when we take damage over here, we're going to need a new um, I enumerator called um, blank, I guess. And we're just going to start coroutine um, blank. And then we're going to take our sprite render, so get component sprite render dot color equals new color red which is um rgb um we don't really use our alpha and then we need to yield um return wait for seconds i think it is i always forget this i'm gonna look it up just to make sure I forget this all the time Pretty sure that's right though. New wait for seconds. I knew that's creating something. You'll return new wait for seconds. We'll wait 0 0.2 seconds. Very small amount of time just to get a blink. And now we're gonna set him back to the usual white, which should be one, one, and one. That's that. We'll get a blink now. So let's take some damage, which shouldn't be too hard. Really hard game. Let's take damage from this laser, and now our player turns red. Kind of want to make that flash even sooner, though. Make it be like that. There we go. So we kind of get that flash now, which just looks nice. We can even make it so when he dies, he'll still flash and then die by making it so in his die function, he dies in that delay. He won't die instantly when he gets hit. Which may look a little bit better. Let's try it out. Let's kill ourselves. There we go. There we go. There we go. We're dead. Nice. And we kind of want our player to explode too when we die. So... So in our die function, oh, well, I guess we don't have a die function. This is our die function, um, but we just want to instantiate an explosion at our transform dot position, and we want to make it be a queer neon dot identity. 
We can even make a different colored explosion for the sake of our spaceship if we wanted to. I mean, why not? We'll just call this explosion uh, one, I guess. And we'll make it be like a cool yellow color, maybe. Why not? Just because we can. We'll delete explosion one and apply it to our spaceship now by dragging it onto our explosion. Also press apply on our ship. And now when we get in, um, we'll kill ourselves. There we go. Haven't got any tanks yet. There we go. All right, so now when we die, we shoot out those yellow explosion particles. So, game's looking great. Um, I guess I'll stop this video. Next time, we'll display our lives and work on the title screen, and that's really all there is to it. Maybe we'll make a high score leaderboard if you want. Not too hard to do. So, thanks for watching. Check out the next tutorial.